Hello everyone, Hyper here, and welcome to my Assassination Rogue Preview for the Shadowlands Beta. Not much has changed for this spec, so this video should be fairly quick. Um, I'm gonna go over baseline spells that have been added, changes to our spells, changes to talents, legendaries, conduits, um, and also how Assassination Rogue feels to play in its current state. So without further ado, let's get started. For baseline abilities that have been added, Assassination Rogue only got two new ones. First one being Slice and Dice, 25 energy, and you can use it between 1 and 5 combo points, or if you use Deeper Stratagem, then 6. So it works the same way as the other specs, you just attack faster while you keep this buff up. Ideally, you will want to keep it up 100% of the time because you just get more melee damage. One big issue with Assassination having Slice and Dice is that we already have other maintenance buffs. We need to keep Growth on the target, Rupture on the target. Um, if you use Crimson Tempest, you need to keep Crimson Tempest on targets. So we already have a bunch of things that we need to uh, maintain the uptime of. And adding another one just slows down the spec because the combo points that you would normally spend on Envenoms now um, every so often it need to be spent on slice and dice. So overall, not too beneficial for assassination. Also a big issue with it is that assassination doesn't generate resources off of melee attacks the same way as subtlety does. So the benefit of actually keeping up slice and dice is a lot smaller than it is for sub, for example. The other baseline ability that we got is shiv and it's a 25 second cooldown. Shiv for assassination works differently than it does for others for the other two specs. Um, it costs 20 energy and it reads attack your target with your poison blades, dealing physical damage and applying a concentrated form of your um, non-lethal poison. And it also increases your nature damage done against the target by 20% for 9 seconds. So that should sound familiar because Toxic Blade has been removed from the talent tree and they basically integrated Toxic Blade into Shiv for Assassination. So while for Outlaw and Sub, Shiv is more of a flavor spell and more of a niche spell, for Assassination it is a core rotational cooldown that you will want to use basically every time it's up, similar how you did with Toxic Blade in the past. When I said there were two abilities that were added, I actually lied, there's three. Um, so the third one is Ambush, it costs 50 energy, it works just like it did in the past, it deals physical damage, and it get, um, generates two combo points. So, as far as I know, Ambush simply replaces our um, Stealth Opener, so in the past you would Garrote from Stealth, now you actually want to Ambush from Stealth, and then Garrote the first global after you've exited Stealth. Um, obviously in PvP this can still change where you want the silence from Garot, but in general Ambush will be the better option. So then looking at the talent tree, not much has changed. Um, in the first tier Blindsight has been reworked. It now causes your Mutilate to make your Ambush usable outside of Stealth. So it's similar to how warriors get a proc based execute. Sometimes you just proc an amb ambush and you're able to use it. Um, and this happens more often when the target is in execute range. So overall, I really hope that they tune this correctly because just adding an extra proc based reactive spell to assassination would make it a little more interesting to play because assassination is probably the slowest rogue spec out of the three. Um, and it needs some sort of reactive based proc that you want to use rather than just revolving around maintaining three or four debuffs slash buffs. With the removal of Toxic Blade, we do get Alacrity. So that works the same way as it does for Outlaw and Sub. Your finishing moves have 20% chance per combo point to grant you 2% haste for 20 seconds, stacking up to five times. So you're just going to passively maintain this throughout a raid encounter um, and it just adds some haste to your rotation. Overall it feels alright to play with but just a super Next let's talk about the legendaries and I will only mention the ones that I think should be good on assassination and if they're not what could be done about improving them. The first one being Mark of the Master Assassin. While stealth is active and for 5 seconds after breaking stealth your critical strike chance is increased by 100%. 
So this comes from the Legion Legendary that was pretty much best in slot and everyone used. My big concern is its interaction with the Master Assassin Talent. So the Talent makes it so for 3 seconds instead of 5 seconds, your crit is increased by 50% instead of 100%. If you use the Master Assassin Legendary, this Talent is completely worthless. So I really wish that they either change the Talent or change the Legendary to work similar to Night Stalker maybe, uh, where it increases your damage after you've broken stealth or during stealth. Um, so then they actually have a good interaction with each other. Um, because this way, if you take the Master Assassin Legendary and Master Assassin Talent, the Master Assassin Talent nets you zero extra DPS. So it just doesn't make sense that we would have both of those as available choices. Next we have the Insignia Legendary, uh, your poisons and bleeds deal 30% increased damage to targets below 30% health. So this is probably the go-to progression legendary um, in general, especially in Legion when this was available as a legendary as well. It brought a lot of value to Assassination Rogue because it essentially enforced it being more of an execute class on progression. So looking forward to this one, and it should be pretty good to use on raid encounters. Next for the legendaries that are probably not best in slot, but do show some sort of promise, we have Dashing Scoundrel, and Venom also increases the critical strike of your poisons by 30%, and their critical strike generates two energy. So this essentially just increases some of your um, energy generation that you get from basically keeping up your rotation and your dots so assassination rogue plays super slow currently and just adding extra energy to your rotation once you have a decent amount of crit uh, will make it a little bit nicer to play so then looking at covenants i'm not going to go over what each of the covenant abilities do because i did that in the sub rogue video in this one i'd rather talk about how they interact with the assassination toolkit so for the Kyrian, we have Echoing Reprimand, and like I mentioned in the Sub Rogue video, it is still super annoying to use. Um, even as uh, an Assassination Rogue, trying to use your combo points when you're forced to use a certain amount is a little bit annoying because there is RNG generation um, involved with combo points. So overall, annoying to use even though it sounds cool on paper. For Necrolords, Serrated Bone Spike, still seems to be the best one just because it essentially adds another rotational ability to a super slow spec since assassination rogue revolves a ton around pooling your energy and then using your energy in little bursts when you have and then outside of that just keeping up your maintenance uh bleeds and now slice and dice increasing another combo point generator that costs very low energy just synergizes super well with the assassination toolkit and also multi-target where assassination rogue has historically been pretty good when you're like cleaving two maybe three targets on council style bosses where you get a ton of extra energy from keeping up bleeds on multiple targets it makes sense that serrated bone spike also works well in that situation since you're generating more combo points based on how many targets you have the debuff on. Then for Night Fae, we have Sepsis. And a big issue with this is that the dot that you apply does not scale with any amplifying effects that Assassination has. So Master Poisoner, Shiv, um, and our Mastery, none of those affect the damage that you will deal with Sepsis. So currently on paper is just weaker than the other abilities. Um, however, if they changed it to actually interact with our toolkit and it should make sense that our amping abilities actually affect it, then it might be decent to use on Assassination. Then moving on to Ventir, we have Slaughter. And this is arguably the weakest covenant for Assassination. So Slaughter gives you Slaughter Poison and that's essentially just a shadow version of our Deadly Poison. Um, also, you need to use Slaughter from Stealth. Assassination just got an ability that we use from Stealth through Ambush. 
so it makes absolutely zero sense to replace our ambush with slaughter since we don't need any of that in our toolkit. We can open with ambush from stealth, which deals the same damage as slaughter, and then once we're out of stealth, we apply deadly poison, which is the exact same as the slaughter poison, it just does different type of damage. So I'm really disappointed in the Ventir Covenant for assassination, and I hope they make some sort of changes to it to make it at least situationally useful, um, maybe in PvP, but even that, it just seems like Assassination has better options when it comes to Covenants than the Venthyr one. Next, going over Conduits. Um, unfortunately, the Assassination Conduits, like most of the other ones, are fairly boring. First up, we have Lethal Poisons. Increases the non-periodic damage of your Lethal Poisons by 30%. So, Assassination Rogue does a lot of poison damage, and this just amplifies that even, even further. So, it's on paper, it's a good Conduit. Then we have Poisoned Qatar, Fan of Knives damage increased by 8% and has 8% increased poison application chance. Um, might be decent for like Mythic Plus if so, or if Assassination ends up being the spec that you play, but for Raid Encounters has almost no purpose um, other than a few bosses that you have a lot of adds on. Then we have Maim Mangle, Garot increases the damage of your Mutilate on the target by 20%. This um, just interacts with our toolkit super smoothly. Basically, you want to keep Garot up on your target no matter what, just because you want to generate more um, energy. So it makes sense that they added an extra bonus to it. So it just makes it even more important to keep Garot up 100% of the time. Then we have Well-Placed Steel. Shift's damage is increased on bleeding targets and extends the duration of your Envenom. Um, by one second, and I think that's supposed to scale with Conduit rank. So how does Assassination Rogue play? If you played Assassination at the beginning of BFA, it will play very similar to that. Um, the spec itself is very slow, it revolves around keeping up a few bleeds, and then any extra ex combo points that you generate, you just want to use on Envenom. Um, unfortunately, with the introduction of Slice and Dice, the spec became even slower than it was previously, um, the Necrolord Covenant does introduce a positive, I believe, to the spec, just because it fills some of those empty globals that you had before. Without Necrolord, you literally sit around quite a bit of the time, just pulling up your energy. Um, with Necrolord, the Bone Spike ability that you get, it makes it feel a little bit smoother to play. With the removal of Toxic Blade as a talent, we do get Alacrity, so the spec does gain some passive haste that you need to keep up. My big issue is that Alacrity as a talent doesn't make much sense. Also, Assassination Rogue, more than some of the other specs, um, has a lot of dead talents that I'm very sad to see. For example, Venom Rush has been essentially unusable since it's been introduced. Exsanguinate is a lot more difficult to play with now just because we need to keep up so many bleeds and so many buffs. Um, then in some of the higher rows, Deeper Stratagem never really had good interaction with Assassination just because of how much we rely on Vigor to just have more energy since we play around pooling and also gain extra energy regen. Like I said, Master Assassin has absolutely zero interaction as far as I know with the master assassin legendary so that needs to be fixed so like i said assassination has a lot of dead talents currently that i hope they take another look at because otherwise it will just be another expansion of assassination rogue feeling the exact same as it did in bfa thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and let me know in the comment section what you think about assassination rogue are you glad to see so few changes to it um, that might either be a sign that Blizzard is happy with the spec or that they have no idea what they want to do with it. So I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section below. Again, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.